as you know the things of young people, you leave the house very early in the morning and then you come back at midnight. Uh, if you're to ask me, uh, I used to be at work from about 8.30 to 7 p.m. in most cases. And uh, the time between 7 and 11, I don't really remember what I used to do. But for some reason, I would find myself at home at 11 p.m. So my neighbors didn't know me very well. They just knew that there's a guy who has much hair, short, small. He lives in that house. And whenever he passes by, he usually waves at us. And the truth is that when I don't know you very much, in most cases I don't engage in long conversations, my persona is of an introvert. I will only joke and laugh with you a lot when we know each other. I know that when I say something, you will not easily punch me. When I've understood you very well, I can talk as much as I can. So I lived there. I didn't know that actually... I. I had just lived there for about a month, and I didn't know that actually people knew me in the area. Now, I was working with the sponsored children, and many of, that ch many of our children were coming from that area. And many of them had told their parents that they used to call me Uncle Simo those days. And Uncle Simo stays there. So after some time, I would move around, and people would, would call me Uncle Simo. So I, I just dealt with it, I knew that was the predicament. Whenever you work among children, you're either going to become an uncle or an aunt. If you're a little bit older, I don't know what they call you. I am just waiting to become old and see what they will call me. But uh, uh, for some reason, those guys used to call me that. And whenever they would see me come around at daytime, their imagination was that this guy has come to register sponsored students. I had something I would offer them. So many of them did not, were somehow my friends, they were nice to me. But for some reason, even if I had all that influence and access into their homes, even the hardest guys, I had access into their homes. For some reason, I didn't, I didn't engage them that much. I used to just move through. You know, Chirombe has miyala, small, small mialas. You can pass here today, and the road is not there the next morning because it has rained, something of that kind. So you would jump over the mwala and run over. And uh, it, it was, it's, it's not, it's a low class end. Now, in that area, there was also another lady. For her, she had somehow a good house compared to all the people around. Uh, and she also has a, she had a small shunt where she used to sell from alcohol. This local group, Gracie Tangara. That's the best name I know of it. And very many guys used to hang around her place. She also used to host a circle in her place and very many ladies especially at that time would come and sit there and then they would uh, get to know who is earning money i think this week or something the way circles operate uh, for some reason sometimes our landlord would close the tap so i used to have to go out of the gate and go and buy water from her place but on many occasions i would find there these dirty drunk guys now they have come to, you know they are drunk, but they are still buying more glass of tangara. You would find them there buying alcohol. And on some of those occasions, I would find the lady actually encouraging them. She would tell them that they were going to make it in their lives. Now yet in reality, when you look at the guys, you know things are not going to be fine after here. But she would encourage them, and they had hope each and every day. And after, encourage them, uh, after encouraging them, they would buy some alcohol for 500 or 300 shillings and live their lives. The truth is that I had more influence. People loved me, and people wanted what I had. But I wasn't doing what this lady was doing. And the truth is that if us... Who claim? You know, born again is the way well, we declare, declare things. We always claim that, man, we are the righteousness of God. Actually, yesterday we met a, Catholic, a lady who said she was Catholic. If I would remember those days I used to preach, I would tell them, as in I would show them how I am more righteous than them. And the truth is that we usually declare all those things. But here I was, a born again, in a community where people love the things I am doing. But for some reason, I would ignore. As I told you, if I don't know you very much, I usually wave. I don't usually have many words. And surprisingly, I'm not very good at greeting in certain languages. So I don't know the right word to place there. So to, in order to save myself, I just usually wave and I'm like, Chavale. and then I... Move on with my journey. But I was there. I had this great thing in me. I was very born again. Eh? Very anointed, I think. 
And for some reason, this lady who wasn't anointed and wasn't anything was influencing these people and encouraging the community. Actually, very many guys would show up. There were better bars at the street. But for some reason, all these guys, even smart people would come and sit there and listen to her jazz, her telling them that, man, life is going to become better. Yeah, the politics in this nation might not be fine, but just know, if anything changes, we are going to be fine. And that is the truth about this world. If we, as born again, if we who claim to be righteous, we who claim to have the best gift, don't do our part, then we leave the world to, in the hands of such people, and they will direct it in whatever direction that they will direct it. And you know, by now I know many of you know the vision of the city church. Nange, we used to declare it very many times. And when you work here, you get to know it very well. And I'm going to ask us to recite it as we move on with the sermon series. Let's recite the vision of the city church. One, two, three, let's go. Now, when I started teaching here, when I started working here, the first ministry I served in was children's ministry. And there, for kids to pick a memory of us, they had to repeat it two times. And today, I have just come to tell us one thing, that you are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. You are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And to get to understand that a little bit better, let us go in our Bibles to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 18 to 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 from verses 18 to 20. Yes, that book is just, uh, it's in the New Testament. It's after 1 Corinthians. It's around there after 1 Corinthians. So let us read. Now all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. When Paul was writing, when Paul was writing the book of Second uh, Corinthians, he was writing it in response to the first later that he had written to them. So he writes this first, condemn, commending them for. Uh, complying with everything that he had suggested them in the, to them in the first letter. And also, many people had doubted his apostleship because he had not behaved the way all the other apostles in the land of Corinthians were behaving. Many of them always wanted someone to give them a gift after they had shared the word with them. They wanted people to thank. They wanted that form of praise. And for some reason, Paul used not to do them. And because of that, guys were asking questions. But it seems this guy even doubts himself. So Paul starts writing masses and masses of things, explaining why he was behaving the way he was behaving and to what ends he went to make sure that people were entering the kingdom of God. And when he reaches verse chapter 5 and particularly in verses 18, he starts speaking of what he is as an apostle of Jesus Christ. Now you should understand that as Paul is writing these things, he's telling these people, he's writing about himself, but in his heart there is a very deep desire that he wants these people to be exactly like, he, like him. He had gone to Corinth, he had preached there, he was the one who was responsible for their conversion. And many of them had not yet reached the level that he wanted them to reach. So at a certain point he reaches verses 8, of chapter 5 and these are the words that he says now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and you, you hear the first line says that all things are of God 
Guys, I want to tell you that when English says that something is of something, it simply means that that thing's origins are of the latter things. So when the Bible says that all things are of God, it simply means that everything in this world has its origin from God. Whether it doesn't look like as if it is godly, whether it doesn't look, it doesn't impress you as something holy. Whether you are the one who sweated and worked as in when you look at everything, this time it wasn't your friends, it wasn't your parents, it was you that got what you had. But the scripture has told us that all things are of God. And then it continues saying that who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. Now, whenever reconciliation appears in our English, we just know one thing. There has been a disagreement somewhere. And the truth is that when we read our scriptures, there was a disagreement somewhere between man and God. God created this world, placed man in charge, placed man, placed animals there, placed everything there. And then he told man, man, take charge and improve this stuff. Do uh, serve my purposes in this in this garden that I've placed you in. But one thing that I want to ask from you, please do not eat of a certain fruit. So man went ahead, the fruit became appearing. And on that day, the guy just what? Tried to chew. And when he chewed, the repercussions of chewing that God had told him earlier fell on his life. So a disagreement, a hostility developed between man and God because of that. Now the hostility wasn't only uh, between man and God, but it affected all creation. It affected everything in this world. And the reason why the state of affairs is the way it is is simply because something that was perfect and that had proper functions somehow messed up and then things became bazaar. Something went wrong. But the Bible says that God is full of love and is full of mercy and is full of grace. The Bible says that he decided to reconcile everything to himself through Jesus Christ. And it continues to say, and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Reconciliation is about bringing things together. It's about replacing hostility, anger with love. It's about replacing rejection with acceptance. And those are the things that God was doing to us. And after he did them to us and we understood them. And therefore right now we call ourselves holy. We call ourselves strong because of God. He has handed this same ministry to us that we may tell others. That we may tell everything in this world. That man, God has done to you exactly what he has done to us. He has made peace with you. Since he has made peace with us, he has also made peace with you. That is the ministry that he has placed upon our hearts. So the scriptures go on moving. In verses 19 he says, That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses on them. At a certain time, T, God became flesh and he came unto this world. And that was Jesus Christ. And when he came into this world, very many things that were unheard of started happening. Jesus came into the Jewish land. The Jews were the people who were considered the people of God. And they knew that they carried everything that was of God. So when Jesus and these Jews had, because they carried the things of God, you know, you guys have heard of the story of exile. One day they sin and then God sends them to Babylon. They spend there some good number of years. So Jesus comes when these guys have returned back to their land, the promised land that God had given them. But they were so determined, never to ever go back to exile. So they set up structures that would make sure that happens in their land. And those structures ended up creating a certain form of culture among them. So it divided people into groups. There were the super righteous, uh, righteous, there were the sinners, and then there were the super sinners. And it was, in that culture, it was standard that the righteous were not supposed to mix up with the unrighteous. 
if they found you among the unrighteous, you would become unrighteous and you would therefore pay a certain penalty for your righteousness to be restored. Then there shows up a man who is like the righteous as in they would identify with him very well. But for some reason, this guy was hanging out with the unrighteous. For the first time, a very righteous person saw a tax collector, the worst kind of sinners, sinner in that culture. And then he was like, Sebo, calm down. Today I'm going to dine with you. As in that was extreme. It was okay at least to pass on the same street with them. But this guy decided to engage the fella. He went into his house and ate his food. In that case, that food would be considered unclean. You, he was breaking everything that was already established. And then after eating food, he stayed there and then he told him that, man, as in after this guy, he felt something so good in his heart and he's like, ah, today I'm returning all the taxes I've stolen. Then guys, the Pharisees, the, the, the righteous people, of course, were around. They were always around. They saw and they were like, man, this fella might not really be like us. So when they tried to attack him, they thought that the brother was going to change. He instead continued to another level. One day, they catch a certain lady in adultery. And those days, if they caught someone in adultery, the penalty was death. So guys came with their stones ready to stone this lady to death. I don't know where the man was. The Bible just talks about the lady. So they come and they are like, teacher, so please tell us. We have caught this one. And he was in the act. And we are not just two witnesses. We are many. The Bible says that he, well, why did he write on the ground? But he just wrote on the ground. And then he turned and asked them that if, and if whoever has never committed any kind of sin should be the first one to throw the stone. And all of a sudden, the guys just started dropping their stones down from the oldest until the youngest. And they left. And the guy was like, where are your, choos your choosers? Guys, that was unheard of in this guy's culture. In them, many of them knew that he was a messiah. But they were like, man, this messiah is going to take us to exile. So they had to come up with a way of eliminating him. The brother was hanging out with sinners. He was hanging out as in things were happening. Lepers, lepers were not allowed to just come and attend any meeting. But lepers would also come and at least stand behind a fence and listen. To what this guy is saying and many of them were getting healed people's lives were changing as in this wasn't just hope this wasn't just optimism optimism hope was being restored in people's lives and what was really happening is that god was in jesus christ reconciling back men to himself even romans you know no there were the samaritans samaritans were considered dogs in the society i don't know why they considered them dogs but when you reach a, a point and you call your fellow human being a dog then he might be the worst of the worst but that's what they called them anyway and even the samaritans who were considered dogs they expected the teacher to chase them away but for some reason they would also come and then they would listen in fact it was unheard of for a meeting of godly things eh? a meeting of righteous people to have sinners in it but this time around this guy would host a meeting and the see the uh, the most holy guys would attend the, the righteous ones the simple righteous would attend the worst sinners would attend the dogs would attend even the romans would sometimes come and listen and they're like man which kind of thing is this but that is what was happening god was loving on people god had decided to show his love towards people he had decided to make his people peace with people when they threatened him with this he was not scared about it he decided to go to the cross for us and he was doing all that for us so that he may pay the price that would later on allow us to be reconciled back to god so that's where the whole story starts from you realize that the reason why all these guys were coming was simply because christ was not imputing their sin on them to impute is to declare something he was not declaring declaring sin over anyone he wasn't he decided to instead love them 
He wasn't declaring on anyone their weaknesses. He decided to love them. Man, even us when we look at our lives right now, you look at the things you have done, then you look at where you were born, and then you look at the things you were planning to do a few minutes ago, and you're like, hey, but why does this guy still love me? The reason why he loves you is because his love is so great. The reason why he loves you is because he decided to reconcile you back to God. Now, when we take on the ministry of reconciliation, we become ambassadors of Christ. So in verses 20, he says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Right now, because of what has happened to us, we become ambassadors of God. The sermon series is you are, we are. So these words are not very personal to you. If you're feeling that you're the only ambassador. And in fact, when Paul was writing these words, when you read through the Bible, it will feel like he's talking about himself. But the guy wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about everyone whom Christ had touched and had understood it. So each and every one of us here is an ambassador of Christ. And when you are an ambassador, you are supposed to do things in a certain way. An ambassador is always sent by their nation to represent that nation in another one. So an ambassador will always be addressed by the title of a president, His Excellency. Now, I, as we are looking through this scripture, I don't want you to look at the ambassador of today. The ambassador of today is weak. The only power he has is within his fence. Anything outside the embassy, he can do nothing. But the Roman ambassador was very powerful. And uh, I tried to dig through and find out what this word really meant. In Greek, it is a hard word for me. It's presbeo. In Latin, I like Latin, it is ligatai, and in English, it's he's a deputy governor. And this was the structure of leadership in the Roman empires. Please give us that structure. Now, this guy, whenever he would go to a particular province, you know, Rome had conquered the whole of Judea. It had conquered actually the whole of the civilized world at that time. At least that's what they, I don't know whether we were there, Africans were civilized, Simani. But whatever the Bible talks about, it's around that area. So let us take the Bible as the authority. He had conquered, conquered all over, over the whole civilized world. And when they conquered this place, for them they were not very dangerous. They wouldn't come and remove your culture. No, they will let you live within your culture. All you have to do is to pay their tribute and also you had to surrender to them certain towns which they would turn to look like Rome. Then the other thing is that you had to represent, to respect their emperor because the emperor had divinity. He was considered to be someone like God. He was divine, my friend. So this guy was the representative of that divine guy. He was the representative of the emperor in a province where he was placed. And each province was headed by a governor who was also appointed by who was also appointed by the emperor. But the governor's role was mainly to take care of leadership in that territory. Remember, they are not destroying your culture, so they will leave you with their, your structures of leadership. Most of us are familiar with Jesus' movie. Eh? Any of them, they will show these things. You will see King Herod show up. You will see that when Jesus is arrested, he's first taken to the high priest. And then after that, he's taken to King Herod. Then after that, he's taken to Pilate. Now, in that case, King Herod was the descendant of David. He was the, he was the king of the Jews. Then uh, Caiaphas, who was the high priest, was the one in charge of the temple business. You know the temple was the center of uh, the universe to the Jews. Then Pilate was the governor sent from Rome to lead that area. Then there is a guy who is never mentioned anywhere, but he was there. He was the ambassador. He was the ambassador. And those days, in Latin, they call him the legator. I will not go into the other word. It is hard for me to pronounce. But this ambassador guy, his role was to make sure that Rome's interests are fulfilled. He did not care. He didn't care out about your culture. Even if Rome was promoting other people's cultures, that wasn't his business. He made sure that all the taxes that were supposed to be collected were collected. 
He also made sure that the cities that were supposed to look like Rome looked like Rome. And he made sure that those cities were built with resources from you guys yourselves, you're the ones who would collect money on top of the taxes and build everything. Actually, archaeologists have excavated most of what was the Roman Empire. When you go there, you will find that these guys built Colosseums, they built uh, Roman houses, as in Roman architecture is found in every province where these guys reigned. As in, he was supposed to make sure that there is Roman influence in every place, in the place where he had been assigned to lead. For you to qualify to be an ambassador, you must have had a military background. So you are a soldier, and you are handed a legion. A legion is, a, is an army. You are handed an army to help you fulfill your work. Then the other thing is that you had authority from the emperor. Even if you were under the governor, still you had authority from the empire. So that means your word was more final than the governor's word, even if he was your boss. Then the other thing is that you had to make sure, my friend, you protect the interests of the, of the emperor. Otherwise, if he, because this guy was like God, and on many times, on many occasions, he used to make trips around the emperor, around the empire. So he would just be there sleeping, and he's like, I feel like going to Judea. And if he comes to Judea and he reaches and he doesn't feel like home, ambassador, you're in for it. If you were a close friend, there's a very high possibility that you'll just be recalled to your country. And uh, of course, that was also bad. Everyone would get to know. I don't know how their information used to move. They had no internet, no newspapers, but their messengers would make sure that everyone knew that Gundi failed in his duties and that's why he has been recalled back home to sit down so you would become a laughing stock and no one these guys were proud no one wanted to become a laughing stock the other option was death if you didn't fulfill your duties you would be killed so whether what or what mr ambassador had to make sure that these things are fulfilled. And Paul, using that background, using that understanding, is telling the Corinthians. He's talking about himself and telling the Corinthians that we, you, are ambassadors this time for Christ. And we know that Christ is good. And we know by now, because in the previous sermon, Pastor talked about it, that the kingdom that Christ was introducing would never come to one end. It was beginning, it has begun, it is here, and it will never come to one end. We also usually even take pride in it and say, man, we are in the thing. But brothers and sisters, we didn't just get saved to be in the thing. Eh? When you hear born again preach, I'm a born again. I have ever done some street preaching and class preaching. Man, we speak of this thing. Eh? It is nice. But the truth is that it's not for only us. God has done that to us so that we become ambassadors of Christ in wherever we are. So just with the same force that this guy had, we are also supposed to have the same kind of influence in the places where we live it's not a joke it is a serious thing and the way the scriptures are god takes it very seriously because when paul was writing he was taking it so serious in most cases when he writes he talks about he brings out words i think he was saying you when you read it it feels like we persuade all men but when you read it again you feel like we persuade all men you feel like as if he's putting in all his force to tell everyone that men you have to be reconciled to God so when he's speaking these words he says that we are ambassadors of Christ and it is as though God is pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God so you realize that God brought us to himself for us, of course, to, we, there is that feel-good effect and uh, all those good things that happen to us. But God brought us to himself so that we may continue the work that he started in Christ. None of us is here and for you, you just came to sit in and have a good time. No, it is bigger than that. When Paul uses the word ambassador, he's talking about that kind of force. You make sure... Your life depends on it. 
because that was the ambassador's issue your image depends on it and your life depends on it i want to remove image today and i put it that your life depends on it that's what the ambassador's the motive was it would motivate you even if you were a weak guy even if they just chose you to be an ambassador because you are maybe you are somehow related to the emperor that's why you became an ambassador your life depended on it if anything happened and you did not fulfill your duty oh my god death was looming and that death was your own so under honest terms wherever we live wherever god has placed us he has not just placed us there to have a good time oh god i thank you you gave me a great job My friend we like saying testimonies testimonies are like that but the truth is that you got the good job to be an ambassador of christ in that place i don't know why but god is so nice to me these days he just makes things work for me can you believe it he gave me a big house jesus christ you have the biggest house in that area because god blessed you in there as his representative so you ought to represent him you have to arm yourself with this attitude wherever you go it doesn't matter where you're going to spend there only three years i ah, know i've shifted to this place you know uh, employment has its issues eh? you can be working here then the bosses say that you have been transferred from kampala to which place there is a place people usually talk of especially doctors from kampala to Ujiri. Ah! and you're like jesus christ even if you're going to spend Two years in Bujidi. My friend, God has sent you there as an ambassador. And just like the other ambassador, made sure that things change and look nice for Rome in that place. Things for the kingdom are supposed to change because of you. It is not because of the guys who stand up here. Mm -mm. This guy is, by the way, the guys who stand up here also have somewhere they usually go. It's not only here. God has made us ambassadors in other spheres also. And we have to be serious with these things. So my friend, as you're seated there, I want you to start thinking about your workplace. I want you to start thinking about your home or your school or your local council, wherever you come from. You know, for us as the church, we thought about it and set up tables. And tables are doing that kind of work out there. Yeah, and that's why I'm telling you that if you're not part of a table, there's something that is not fine about you, especially if you want to be a member of this church. But each and every one of us god has placed us somewhere he has given us all the resource that we have he has given us all that influence so that we may make others also know that god has made peace with them